Hey folks, Doxy here, and I'm going to be moving on to showing you how I do my style of mob piping. And while there are a number of ways that people do mob piping, uh, there's a specific style that I do that I consider to be best practice, and I'm just going to be showing you that here. Now there are a couple things about water and mobs that I want to share with you first. And the one that everybody should know by now is that water flows when put at ground level 8 blocks. And the style that I use uses copious amounts of signs. And when you put it on top of a sign it'll flow 9 blocks. And when you hook these up end to end, you get a seamless transition from one flow into the next so that there are no blocks that are dry in which a solitary mob will just be standing there until another one comes pushing them along. Now this is all fine and dandy for moving a mob straight on a consistent elevation. To move them vertically I have this example over here. To move them vertically, you want to stagger source blocks between signs. And I can't really recommend putting more than one source block vertically, instead of having, say, two or three. Now to transition a mob from a lateral movement to a vertical movement, I like to have the first water source block at head level. And the reason why I always put one at head level is because if it's just at their foot level, there's not the guarantee that they're going to make the jump up to where the next source block would be. If the source block is instead at head level, there's the consistency that they're always going to clear into the next vertical source block, and you don't run the risk of having the piping getting clogged. Now, as they move up vertically, I like to use one of the vertical source blocks into the first lateral movement block so that they're consistently moved from the vertical immediately into the lateral. Now to make a mob fall more than three blocks, and three is the maximum height that I'm comfortable dropping a mob without any sort of water break like I have one down there, you always want to have a sign at the end of your flow. And while it may not be necessary if this flow here is eight or nine blocks long, depending on, on how you have this one set up, it's always even then a good idea to have a sign here, because I find in my experience that this type of mob piping is typically in the back workings of your mob system. And if something goes wrong, and sometimes it does, it'll take you longer to figure out that, oh, it was this bit here, and if that sign's there, it acts as a fail-safe to keep you from needing to tear apart your mob system just to get to this one tiny little spot, which is a real hassle to fix, especially when you're bobbing up and down trying to fix it before you fall down and get processed like you're a mob. Now, as you fall, it's a good idea to have two, typically three source blocks in the vertical here. These two are source blocks as well, as are these to break the mob's momentum and prevent them from taking fall damage. Again, this whole system is set up to minimize the likelihood of damage so that you're able to inflict the exacting amount of damage on them when the time comes and harvest them for the experience. And the reason why this pit is actually too wide is because as they hit this water source block here, they're going to start moving laterally and you don't want to have them risk hitting a solid block as they fall in at a diagonal here if that block was instead over here. And so as they fall down, even if they are moving laterally to some extent, there's not going to be nearly enough to be able to impact the corner of this block right here. And it'll just, if all four of these and this one here are source blocks, they'll just effortlessly swim up and continue on their merry little way. Now here you see I have 
what is effectively an exercise in moving mobs vertically where they only get transported vertically three blocks up and then three blocks down each time. And you see I consistently have it so that the first vertical flow is at head level. Each exchange starts laterally with the last uh, vertical source block here. And I've set this up this way so that those who want to download my world file will be able to use this as a reference. And if you look here, I have the maximum height that I'm comfortable dropping mobs at three. One, two, three. Still with a cushion of water here. And I haven't seen any mobs take damage from this particular setup either. So here we have linear movement, vertical movement, but let's say you want to move your mob around a turn. Okay, that's where this example comes in. Here I have flows of 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2 set up right here. And this is the first opportunity I have to drive home the biggest point that I want to make with this video. And that is that this style of corner here is the best option that I have ever seen when it comes to making turns with mob piping. And before I explain to you why this is a better idea, I'm going to explain to you why the alternative is a bad idea. The temptation is to simply have a source block flow effortlessly around a bend like this. And if you have a fairly meager flow of mobs, this isn't going to be too terrible. But with a higher volume of mobs, which my mob towers is, are pretty much guaranteed to give you, you're going to run into a very specific problem, and that problem will clog your pipes. And the problem I'm speaking about is because the width of this block is going to be occupied by mobs both here and here, as they come through, there's a possibility, and it does happen actually more frequently than I really am okay with, that you'll get a mob stuck in this corner here and have another mob coming down this way, trying to make the turn, and it won't be able to because it's also pushing against the mob that I'm representing against this far wall here, completely clogging the system at a simple turn. And so you're gonna get a backlog of mobs this way and nothing is going downstream until you know enough of them die and this one gets bounced loose and is actually able to move on. And that doesn't mean that with the backlog, of mobs, another one won't just immediately clog the system right here. The good idea that I'm espousing here is to have your water flows move perfectly laterally without any 45 degree flow. So as they move in here and just start touching this water flow here, they'll get moved to the side of the corner, far away from the danger zone in the outside of the corner. And once they clear into it, they'll be moved perfectly sheer against the flow that they were coming from and clear that corner as quickly as possible. And while it does require a couple signs to be able to do this, the likelihood of this being clogged by mobs is much, much lower. That said, as you take a look at this here, you'll see I have a corner around a bend of two, but not a bend of one. That's really just how this one was set up here. Now you can, in application at least, have a flow of only one. Here you see I have a flow of two, and if I really wanted to make this super complete, I could have put in a couple blocks here, broken that one out, and used the water from this flow to make it so that there was a single flow of water right here. The reason why I didn't is because it made a 45 right there, and for the sake of completeness, I didn't care to leave that there. Anyway, you can have water flow around a hairpin turn, even keeping to a too wide or a, a too long source block. And I have examples of that here. Now these hairpin turns work off from a concept that I have demonstrated here, with flows too long on top and on bottom. 
And as far as best practices are concerned, it's always a good idea to make sure that there aren't any flows at head level any longer than two. And if ever I find a flow of water at head level that is three or more, I will go out of my way to make sure that mobs don't run the risk of taking accidental drowning damage. <clears throat> Just what I do, and this is Doxy's best practices. Now for these hairpin turns, I have just like over there, two, two at foot level, two at head level, and I alternate this around every bend. And I got a little overzealous in this example just because this was a lot of fun to make. So by using these various examples that I have here, you can effectively take your mobs and transport them any way, any direction, and by any route you really want to safely and effectively without any risk of damage at all. Now the next part that, that I'm going to be showing you for mob piping is actually how to set up dynamic piping as opposed to, I don't know what this would be called, solid state piping here. And with this dynamic piping, you can use a redstone current be it off or on to control the flow of mobs so that they either flow in a single default direction or make a turn regardless of whether or not that turn is to the side or vertically and then after that I'm going to be showing you a couple tricks I have figured out on how to keep squid out of your system because squid after the hazardous turns that mobs will be making are the single greatest cloggers of mob systems, at least in my experience. You have no idea how many shots have been ruined because of squid while doing this tutorial. Now if you're following along in my tutorial, you probably already have your darkroom set up, your mob sorter set up, you're getting your piping set up to where it is you're going to be processing them. And I split the mob processor up into two separate videos where I'm going to be showing you how the pistons are arranged and then I'm going to be showing you in the second part of the tutorial how to set up the redstone for the automation of it. And with the four links that you are looking at right now, I'm going to give you a couple moments to click one of them and then I'm going to say goodbye. Hey folks, Doxy here, and I'm going to be moving on to showing you how I do my style of mob piping. What just happened there? What is going on? What? I just had I just had a skeleton spawn right on top of me. What the heck? Oh my gosh! I caught that on video. Ah. <laughs> uh.